Well, it is on. Oh, yeah, we're gonna hear everything. Like, over there? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Household of Faith. And to those that watching the service today, special welcome to you, too. Could you please stand with me as we say our worship declaration? O oh Lord, send your anointing. Move by your spirit. Heal and deliver. Have your way in my life individually and in our lives collectively. Glorify yourself and show yourself strong as we worship and praise you and open our hearts to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we will read this morning one of the Psalms, Psalm 34. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. For magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that feared him, and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. O oh, fear the Lord, he who saves, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack, and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want of any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and dwelleth, sorry, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. 
The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. <coughs> Praise be to God, the healing of his word. I will now ask Brother Ryan to lead us in prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It doesn't seem like we are happy to be here this morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. That sounds a little bit better. Um, let us pray. Um, most righteous and eternal God and our Father Lord, as we approach your throne this morning, we just want to set a time to arrive for another day. We want to say a lot of thanks, God, for your kindness, for your mercy that you have extended unto us, Lord. Lord, we want to say a thanks for guiding us throughout the week, throughout the year. Lord, giving us another opportunity where we could come into your hands, come into your presence, and just to lift up your holy name, Lord. Lord, we want to pray and ask that you may continue to protect us, to guide us, Lord. Lord, as we look, so many things have been happening around us, around the world, Father God. This year has been so, you can have so many adjectives to describe this year and what it has been like, Father God. But with all that is happening, Lord, we have hope in you and that is comforting to know, Father God, that we have hope in you and there is always hope, Lord, that we, despite what is happening around us, Father God, you are the solid rock on which we stand this morning. Yeah. And Lord, we just want to say a thanks for your journey mercy. We want to say thanks, God, for just the way you have keep us alive, Lord God. Thank you for providing for us. Lord, thank you, Father God, for your many blessings for us. Because even though sometimes we are not deserving of your blessings, oh, Father God, but you are such a forgiving and loving God, oh, Father God. You still remember us, oh, Father God. You still continue to guide us and protect us. Lord, Lord, we want to hear from you today. Lord, I want to pray for your messenger, Father God, and ask that you may speak to him today, Father God. Lord, I pray, Father God, that after we leave here today, uh, Father God, we could say it was good to be here. Lord, I want a word from you today. Lord, and I pray, Father God, that you will deal with our word with each and every one of us this morning. Even those who are watching us online, oh, Father God, I want you to read a word with them in their hearts. Yeah. Oh, Father God, that after today, oh, Father God, you will be with them throughout the week and throughout the rest of the year, oh, Father God. Use your messenger in a way, oh, Father God, in a special way. Speak to him, oh, Father God. Lord, and I pray, oh, Father God, that you continue to cover us and to guide us, Lord. Lord, we say a thanks for your many blessings. We say a thanks for your forgiveness, oh, Father God. Worship with us today, Father God. Have your Holy Spirit worship among us. Be here, Father God. Lord, capture our mind this morning so we are not distracted with the cares of this world, but just to focus on you this morning, Father God. I rest our heart here, Father God. Father God, and have us to listen to you. Take us to that landmark there, Father God, where we want you, you Father God. Continue to manifest yourself in our lives here, Father God. Continue to bless us, continue to, oh Father God, just guide, cover us under your blood. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ryan, and I will now turn over to the worship team to lead us in worship. Great is the Lord. Great is to be praised. Hallelujah. Be.
soul at the Savior's feet. Lord, we worship you and give you glory. Everybody needs compassion. Love that's never failing. Our God is mighty to save. And we just give him all the glory today. And we're thankful that he has saved us. Amen? Amen. Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Jesus.
thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. You need to see me for a moment. Praise God, praise God. He rose and conquered the grave. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you happy that you're not pushing up daisies this morning? Oh, come on, aren't you? Because we are here, we're not pushing up daisies, we have another day to make it right. If we didn't get it right yesterday, His mercies, it's new every morning. Every day we got new mercies. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. So I do not only welcome to those of you that came a little later. Welcome. It's good to have you here with us. And for those that's watching online, welcome again. So our announcements are free. This Saturday is the last Saturday of the month. So we'll be having fasting and prayer here. The doors will be open at 9 o'clock. So come on out and let us pray. As a pastor ministered last week, it's for me to believe and for God to perform. So let's all come on out believing that whatever we ask for, that God will perform. There is so much from our personal lives, from the life that we're living, you know, many people had plans, and all those plans are put aside. And I think now is the time to use that time. Worship, praise, seek the Lord, encourage each other. So let us fast and commit, whether you can do two hours, four hours, what you can manage. Come on out, pray believing that we're going to see miracles. We're going to see changes. Amen? Amen. So we'll be taking our morning tithes and offerings, and I will ask Brother Alvin to come on up and pray and take morning tithes and offerings. Did I see both the Alvin and the Alvin can oh. come? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> So, you know, when we do the morning ties and offering, the six feet distance, we come up this way and go the other way. 
this side and not this way, and return to your city the other way. Thank you.
recall those heavy bands. Lift up those holy hands. Let all God's children praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now it is a pleasure to introduce our speaker this morning, who is none other than our pastor, Pastor Raymond J. Moore. <coughs> Thank you, thank you, Sister Hillary. Amen. She called my middle name, so I'm wondering if uh, I'm in trouble. She called out my middle name. You know how parents, when they're trying to show that they're really serious, call the child out by their, their complete name. But uh, so good to be in the house of the Lord today. So good to see you. Thank you for coming out to worship with us. We are mindful that sometimes there are those who are feeling well and looking out for the well-being of the congregation and the others, they choose to stay home and we, we appreciate that as well. And we thank you and we know some of you would really like to be here. And uh, we just uh, continue to lift you up in our prayers. Um, I think last week or this week in Manitoba, they just limited the gathering to, I believe, five. And so we are blessed that we can still come on out and uh, congregate together somewhat and still worship the Lord. But five, five people. And... Uh, you know, the Bible says we ought not to forsake the assembling of the saints, and uh, sometimes we take things for granted, and uh, we just give the Lord thanks and praise for what he's doing. The Bible says all things work together for good to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purposes. So even though it seems like the enemy is having the upper hand, he will never have the upper hand because God is in control. And all things will work out according to God's perfect will. Amen. I give the Lord praise today for his goodness. Thank him for this day. For waking me up and for clothing me in my right mind. For the opportunity to come and to share his word to his people. And um, I'm just going to ask you today to... Try to be as focused as you can. I'm going to minister the word of the Lord, and I believe it's a very important word. Oftentimes we misunderstand some things, and um, I believe the Lord really wants us to, to get this. It's not necessarily a sermon that's going to make you jump and shout, so don't fall asleep on me. I'm supposed to do that distance. But if I see you sleeping on me, maybe I'll come down right real close beside you and touch you. I'm joking. <laughs> but a uh, very important uh, word. You know, we're, we're going through some interesting times. And I find often that the church seems to shy away from certain subject matters. I'm not sure why. Maybe because they're controversial. Um, we, we stay away from certain subjects. Um, I'm going to be ministering the word today, and my sermon is really not about race, but I will touch on the topic. But it's really not about race. Um, you know, for those of you who watch the news and you saw Pope Francis, or whatever his name was, um, sanction same-sex marriage and uh, well first it's interesting because much a lot of people within the Catholic faith are really in disagreement with him so that's a bonus I guess his own there's division in his own clan um, I've often grew up in the church and I look at the Pope and the Pope is put in a position to a degree where almost as if he's God's mouthpiece to the entire Christendom, church community believers. 
But I want to declare that the Pope does not speak for me. The Pope does not, he is not the final authority on scripture. And guess what? God is not going to edit his word. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. You're not going to have no petition and vote to change God's word like we can do certain parts of our constitution and whatever. But the Bible did say that the time will come when they will no longer give heed to doctrine. Men will do whatever they want. In fact, the Bible said they will exchange the truth for a lie. Professing to be wise, they became fools. You know, so I was very disturbed by that. Now people are free to do whatever they want, but don't make it seem as if God himself has sanctioned certain things. Amen? Amen? We have free will and we can do whatever. But to make it seem as if God approves of certain things is an abomination and is not right. So I just want to declare that God's word is his word and it will never change regardless of what the Pope says, regardless of what I say. And every time I minister the word of the Lord from this pulpit, I seek not to preach my own opinion, but I seek to preach the scripture. Amen? Amen? I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 and I want to do, I guess we can call this a, a teaching sermon and I'm going to be referring to quite a few scriptures and you might want to jot a few of them down and uh, just for reference. Ephesians chapter 2, I will be reading from verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which ye once walked. According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Verse 11. Therefore, remember that you once, Gentiles, talking to us, once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by what is called circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, I love when the Bible interjects those buts. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Can somebody say amen? amen. For he himself is our peace. Hallelujah. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, 
so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off, and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. For through him, Jesus Christ, we both, who are the we? The Jews and the Gentiles. We both have access by one spirit to the Father. Verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. But fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. Thank you for the word you have placed in my heart to declare to your people for such a time as this to bring clarity and understanding and to appreciate you for who you are and to appreciate our fellow men. Lord, now I pray as I stand as your oracle that you will speak forth your word through me with clarity, with boldness, and with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me say nothing more and nothing less than what you would have me to speak today. Father, I submit myself to you. Have your own sweet way. And the saints of God say, Amen. Amen. Understanding God and his family. It is important that we understand God and his family. Too often we take, we misunderstand God and we take his word out of context and we don't quite get what God is saying to us. God in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 the writing says, let us make man, the, the trinity, or having a, a, a session. Let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want to declare the word of God is very clear. The word of God declares that there is only male and female. I don't care which government or authority wants to add a whole bunch of other stuff. The word of God, God the creator says he is making man and he gives two identification for mankind. When he says let us make man, that Hebrew word is Adam, A-D-H-A-M and it means mankind in general. God said he is making male and female. Again, we can twist whatever we want to twist, but the truth of God still remains. He's making man, and he's making a woman. That's the word of God. And I find sometimes we shy away from certain subject matters, and it's because 
We are embracing it so much as if it's your word. It's not your word. It's not my word. I'm telling you what this book says. So are we going to have a problem with the Bible one of these days? Because the Bible says a lot of things that we don't agree with. It goes against our culture. Is it going to become hate speech or, or whatever it is? But you can't just pick and choose. Many governments and authorities, they place their hands on the Bible when they're swerving their government. Many laws of our land came from this book. So we pick and choose what we want. Hmm. Understanding God and his family. Many things have been happening lately and, and, and the idea of race and, and um, of all different sort of things is coming to the, the forefront of, of society and we're being challenged, we're being faced with a lot of things. But I can tell you this, that racism, for example, is very old. Very old. It's ancient. And I'm going to show you from the Word of God. We're going to we're going to look at some scriptures, and, and, and we're going to see some things based on the Word of God. And, and and God is going to enlighten us today. So God says, "Let us make man." From there we move to Genesis chapter three. Adam and Eve sinned. God was disappointed because sin has now entered the human race. God had a talk with Eve, God had a talk with Adam, and now God is speaking to the serpent. In Genesis 3.15, the very first prophecy of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, coming into the world, it says, where God speaks to the serpent, saying, and I will put enmity between you, speaking to the serpent, and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So there's a prophecy. And it is a prophecy that causes Satan to wonder. I wonder what this means. But I don't believe it is that complicated. It's simply saying that a child is going to be born one sweet day that is going to crush your head, pretty much. So now Satan is living his life looking over his shoulder, so to speak. Because who knows when this child is going to be born? Where is this child going to come from? What will be his race? What will be his lineage? And so Satan is on the lookout. I, 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 just to back up a little bit, I find it very amazing. I find it so reassuring that when God made man and woman, he blessed them and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. I just, you know, I don't want to get too much into that subject now. We're, we're going somewhere here. Genesis chapter 12. I'm going on a journey. So if you don't lose me, I don't want to lose you because then you're going to miss my point. We're going on a journey. Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1, now God had said, God had said, we don't know at what point he said, but based on, on, on the, 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 the grammar and the English, it's past. And at some point, God had spoken to Abram, maybe in a dream of some sort. But it says, God had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make you a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now remember, Satan is on the lookout. Ever since Genesis 3.15 was declared, Satan is on the lookout. So when God said this to Abraham or to Abram, I'm thinking Satan started to pay a little closer attention to Abram 
and to this new race, to this new people that God said he's going to birth, and that in him or through him all the nations of the earth will be blessed, but it's not that specific. But in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, now God is starting to become a little bit more clear about his intent. In Genesis 22, verse 18, God said to Abraham after his test with Isaac, In your seed, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Satan was like, uh-huh, I got my target. You see where I'm getting at? I got my target. Because God in Genesis 3.15 just said the seed of the woman. Well, you're going to keep having children, children, and there's going to be lots of women all over. So how do you know which child from which woman is going to be the seed? But now God became, God made it more specific and said to Abraham, in your seed, meaning from your lineage, from your descendants, the seed that we be a blessing to all the earth, the seed that's going to crush the head of the serpent will be born. So Satan was like, mm -hmm, okay, now I, I can narrow down my search and I don't have to worry about those guys. Don't have, don't have to worry about those guys. Don't have to worry about those guys. I just need to keep my eye on this guy called Abraham. Are you with me? And then we go on to Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and then we got Jacob. From who came the 12 tribes of Israel? Then of the 12, it was said that Judah would be the chosen tribe to bring about the prophesied seed. Furthermore, from the tribe of Judah, it was declared that the seed would come through the family lineage of David. Are you with me? Specifically to be born in Bethlehem of Judah, according to Micah 5 verse 2, which says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. So Satan has his target from Genesis 3.15 to Abraham, to Jacob, to the 12 tribes, and from the 12 tribes, Judah. And from Judah, it was said, from, from, from Judah, it was said it was going to be David's family. So now Satan knew who to look out, which family to keep an eye on, because the seed would come through the family lineage of David. The Jews are one of the most hated race on this earth for reasons that aren't even logical. Why do people hate the Jewish people so much? I've had this talk many different times. And I say, this is more than just a surface thing. This is rooted in spiritual warfare. This is rooted in Satan wanting to thwart or disrupt God's plan of bringing in the seed. Remember, in Egypt, Satan knew that God was going to bring a deliverer. And what did Satan do? Oh, you maybe think it wasn't Satan, but oh, people don't just get up one day and decide they're going to just kill off an old generation of babies. The Bible says Pharaoh gave a command to start killing all the boy babies. The wise men, when they came and they journeyed, because they're following the star, the king of the Jews has been born, and they're going to worship him. And they met, I believe, Herod or Pilate. I oftentimes get them mixed up. This, we're going to worship. And said, oh, is that so? When you find him, bring me news that I may go and worship him as well. That was a lie. 
A king was born that was now going to challenge his authority, so he wanted to kill that child. But the angel of the Lord appeared to the wise men and said, Do not go back the way, way from which you came. Go a different way. So when Herod calculated, oh, no, no, no. These guys should have been back by now. He was enraged and he sent out the command. He did the calculation and says, From the time they came to me to this time, that child that was born cannot be no more than two years old. You know the story. So what was the commission? Kill every baby boy under the age of two. Who was behind that? Satan. Hitler's drive to get rid of the Jewish people. This is a spiritual. They have done nothing to the rest of the world. Why do the Arabs hate the Jews so much? What have they done? They're in a tiny piece of land in the Middle East. And you guys have a ton of land all over. But yet still you want to annihilate the Jewish people. Why? God has a plan. We're going to understand God and his family. I want you to journey with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going somewhere with this message today. I want you to be patient with me. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 32. For ask now concerning the days that are past which were before you. Since the day that God created man on the earth, and ask from one end of heaven to the other whether any great thing like this has happened, or any like it has been heard. Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of fire? As you have heard and lived. Or did God ever try to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of another nation by trials, by signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Did you, to you, it was shown that you might know that the Lord himself is God. There is none other besides him. Out of heaven he let you hear his voice. That he might instruct you. On earth he showed you his great fire. And you heard his words. Out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved your fathers. Therefore he chose their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power, driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you, to bring you in, to give you as an inheritance as it is this day. Therefore, know this day and consider it in your hearts that the Lord himself is God in heaven above and on earth, on the earth beneath. There is no other. You shall therefore keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, and that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Okay, jump over briefly to chapter 14 of the same book, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Here's where it starts to get really interesting. And some would ask, is God... Favorites. Is God showing favoritism? <laughs> Is God showing favoritism? Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves, nor shave the front of your head for the dead. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. That's what God is 
saying to the Jewish people. Man, wow. Wouldn't you like to be a part of that family? Be a part of that. God has chosen you among all the other races or people. God has singled out you and he says, you're my treasure. And a matter of fact, in scripture says, he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. A special treasure. You want to know why the world hates the Jews as much as they do? Why they're fighting over the land of Israel and particularly the Temple Mount as they do? God says, this is mine. God says, this is mine. A special treasure, holy. The word holy is kwarash in the Hebrew, and it means sacred. It means sacred. For verse 2 says, for you are a...